When I was younger, I, this is what we did. We played on the pond, we grabbed our nets and our skates, and we were down there for hours until the sun went down and then we came home. Welcome to Huntsville, Ontario and Deerhurst Resort, the site of the 2010 Canadian National Pond Hockey Championships. Here on Sunset Bay, 260 teams from across Canada will be participating over two weekends worth of full hockey action, the way it was meant to be, outdoors, the way we played it for many, many years. In a moment, we'll be going to the women's and men's final, but right now we want to take a look back to give you an example of just what goes into making the 2010 Canadian National Pond Hockey Championships. It's months of preparation, to be honest, trying to get people allocated as well as the equipment and then figuring out exactly when we can start. We started this process this year, January 11th. We started getting out there and testing the thickness and then we did a 72-hour blitz on the bay, we called it, and it was basically trying to get every inch of snow off of the bay so that we could get the ice thickness up as high as it could be. We're, we're excited to be uh, part of a, an event of, of this scale uh, um, to support uh, the, the uh, in essence the pond hockey in Ontario is that the grassroots the ground roots of hockey in the country for that matter I mean it's a Canadian sport uh, we just had to be part of it. I don't know if I have a favorite memory, but for sure it's just getting together with these guys and you know playing hockey that we don't normally get to play together. So here with my brother and a bunch of friends, so it's you know it's a lot of fun. Uh, it's our first time out here, and uh, waking up, checking the uh, morning weather, looked down and said minus 33, and uh, we had a nine o'clock game, and oh, just remember getting ready. The, the equipment's still wet, and. Uh, it's cold, but it's a lot of fun. It's such a Canadian thing to do. Our reason for getting involved is partly because we're a company uh, local to here in Huntsville, and uh, we wanted to do some more community involvement uh, with the hockey, uh, partly because hockey is a real Canadian sport, and it's, uh, it's great. It's cold this morning, so the weather's pretty good now. We could uh, be out here doing anything, but uh, getting everybody together year after year is uh, what it's all about. Joining us is the organizer of the Canadian National Pond Hockey Championship, Neil Lumsden. And Neil, taking a look at uh, this great tournament that is put on here, so many ranks, so many players. But let's talk about getting this organized and, and what it takes to get it going. You, you might shudder at that thought, but obviously there has to be a lot of planning put into an event like this. Oh, without question. I think that uh, after we did it the first year, it was only one weekend, and then we decided to expand to the second weekend because of the desire to play. It was great. But yeah, it, it is a big undertaking. And it's, and it's one thing to organize and create an event and develop it and then execute it under controlled circumstances and situations but when you come out and play with mother nature she can throw some twists at you so uh, I can't tell you how great the volunteers have been they've been spectacular players come out and play a game and then they leave play another game volunteers are here for three or four hours at a time and then of course the ice crew from uh, Deerhurst Resort uh, I mean it takes so much work we were just joking before a couple machines go down this weather is very hard uh, very hard on them and it's uh, it's been a little bit brisk in the last couple days so but you know what? It doesn't dampen anyone's enthusiasm. Uh, people always have a smile on their face. The ice can crack a little bit, but that's okay. They just slow their, the pace of play down. So it, it's really uh, the, the players, the men and the women that come out here are awesome. But it's a little frustrating at times from the organizational perspective because you want everything to be perfect. But it's outside. I mean, you know, I got to stop thinking that way. Yeah. 
when you take a look at uh, getting everybody out here, all the teams on the ice, there's that certain level of competition and you've seen some of the players here, they may yeah. play former university hockey players, a higher level of, of hockey competition. At the end of the day, when you get together for, uh, uh, you know, maybe a beverage or two at the end of the day, uh, a little bit of a talk, it's all about getting out here and camaraderie. Oh, exactly. I can't tell you how many people that I've had a chance to be introduced to over the last five years and get to know, and if, if I have, so have the players. And, and you know, it, to me, that's what sport is about. I love competition. Uh, I love to win li just like the next guy. But when it's all said and done, you remember the experience, whether you win or lose, and, and having a couple of, as you said, Coors Light at the end of the day. It's who you meet and what you carry on from there. And I think that's one of the attractions that brings people back, that not only the unique environment and the opportunity to play outdoors again, but it's 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 the guys and the gals. You know, it's we wanted when we started to create an event that people put on their calendar every year. And I think we're close to doing that. Certainly from a repeat perspective, well, a lot of teams are coming back over and over. And we got a lot of new ones this year too, so it's great. Looks like you're doing a fantastic job. Keep it up and good luck for the rest of the tournament. I appreciate it. Thank you. That's uh, Neil Lumsden and uh, he joins us here as the uh, organizer of the Canadian National Pond Hockey Championships, which you're watching here on TV Kojiko. We'll take a break and we'll be back in just a few moments. Well, you know, we're, we're a unique environment here and we're proud of it. Uh, the natural uh, areas that we have, the rocks, the trees, the lakes, and of course this time of year, the frozen lakes, which create the, the perfect, uh, perfect setting for pond hockey. And we've had national pond hockey championships here in the past. And part of the reason why people come here is not only is it the natural beauty, but we've got tremendous amenities, Deerhurst and Grandview and all of these places, world-class resorts. and that's part of why the GH coming to Huntsville. Uh, to have the benefit of those in this such a pristine setting as Huntsville really creates an atmosphere that's just irresistible. People just love to come here. Coming up in just a few moments, we'll have the women's final for you. But before that, we thought we'd give you a little bit of an idea or an indication of what the action is exactly like on the ice out there. Megan Whedon is an employee with Kojiko based in Burlington, Ontario, and she gives us a bit of a insight into what happens down at ice level. It's a, a great experience, you, you know, it's not just about the hockey, so you get to play and your friends and the skills really because of the weather and all the other the cracks in the ice doesn't really make a difference, anyone could win at any given time and I think there's a lot more to this type of tournament where you can actually, you know, party with your friends and play and you know just about the good times that you actually have at pond hockey like everyone looks forward to it for weeks at a time and it's just a good event like we do like we do Push the ice it. angels uh, came about my really good friend sherry beckerson uh she had some really traumatic times in her life uh lost two loved uh family members her brother gordy and her dad uh very quickly in time and the for, first year they came in to play in memories of them and they made the angels as in you know to remember the past and she wears a band on her shirt uh, wearing her brother's name he was about 22 years old and sadly this happened so it's and it's c cool because angels you know it's kind of been, can take in either way and girls angels you know, so it's really fun <laughs> The championship, uh, when we actually won the tournament, it was a big success because we had our quarterfinals and the quarterfinal game was basically uh, tied, we were tied at half and then it went into uh, double, or, or we played against our friends, our other Originators team, so we beat them in that game so it was a really hard game and then we went into the semifinals where it went into double overtime, so then the championship was like, it was just very meaningful to get there and then we actually came through and won it. It was just brilliant, like tenacious, and we, yeah, it was just so, 
passionate and a good experience. Oh, catch try. Blood's coming down the far side. Uh, we come back. I mean, it's a, it's more of like a bonding now, not just the hockey. Like it's all the girls come. We have friends that come from. One of our friends live in the Yukon to work, so she comes back just for the weekend, and we just have a really great experience here with our friends. So, you know, we miss. You know, you lose times with your friends when you get older, and everyone starts to do things. And this weekend, I think, is always going to be one of those weekends that we always come together. We are talking about bringing our children in the future, you know? So it's a really good memory for us. Welcome back, John Leatherby and Greg Easterbrooks. And our statistician, Troy Namath, beside us here to keep count of this women's final, the 2010 edition of the Canadian National Pond Hockey Championships. Underway, the Weed, uh, Wade Belax. Well, surprisingly, they're in blue and white. And that team's from Toronto. The alumni are from Montreal, Quebec. And uh, as we'll talk as this game goes on, Greg, you've got two teams that know each other well. They have faced each other in the final the last few years. Absolutely. And uh, the thing is about this game and the conditions today, I mean, when you're outdoors, it's like playing any sport outdoors. Things are a little different in pond hockey, as, as we're all well aware. And uh, Familiarity, though, will help these teams, and there's a goal right away. Kathleen O'Reilly, the captain of the alumni, makes it one nothing and back the other way. Come the Belax, and that's off the goal post. Nets are a little bit smaller here. There's Nirenberg, puts it up on the wing for Giramiso. That goes into the snowbank. Let's be blunt, it's the snowbank. Up and out of play. Let's just keep <laughs> using that phrase, as you'll hear all afternoon long here. Of course, this is non-stop action. There's no breaks, there's no whistles. Just a break at the uh, midway point, so the legs are going to keep moving throughout. That was Nuremberg knocked off the puck there, and Andrea Lynch wearing number 16 gets it at the boards. That's knocked aside, and back the other way, the Belax. Oh, oh, there's, there's a, a... Well, would have been a, trip. be a tripping penalty, <laughs> exactly. But... The play will continue here. As you see, it's fast end-to-end -end action as it's been all weekend long here at this 2010 Canadian National Pond Hockey Championships. Uh, keeping in mind, there are no goaltenders, obviously, with those small nets, but there is a difference between goaltending and not goaltending. You can't stand right in front of the net to be able to knock that aside. There's a shot taken there by Kathleen O'Reilly. As it's turned over and back the other way, the Belax look for the outlet pass. They get it to center. Up on the slot area there as it comes to our broadcast location out of play. And the Belax will take control here. Tight defensive game. We saw that as we walked around here earlier in some of the quarterfinal and semifinal action for the men's. That uh, they will try to take this ice surface, and with no goaltender, you've got to have a very, very tight defensive forechecking style game. Well, absolutely, it's like they're playing, almost like they're playing a shorthanded box. It is four on four hockey, and they're trying to keep the players to the outside as best they can, and so far the two teams are doing a good job of that. There haven't been a lot of great, uh, great chances. There was the one goal, but again, as you said, John, they're trying to keep everybody on the outside. Now, here's a bit of a chance for the Quebec side. And a goal. That is number 14, Vanessa Jeremasu, who puts the alumni ahead. But back the other way, as you can see, no face-offs, obviously. It's just pond hockey the old-fashioned way. Pick it up and move it along. Kathleen O'Reilly will put it forward here as the alumni. Now it's 3-0. They're are, playing very well so far. They're getting all of the chances, and they've got three good chances, John, and three goals, and the uh, Belax <laughs> sadly are playing like the Belax right now. Well, they've got to be able to tighten their defensive game a little bit more, play a little bit more women-to-women -women coverage, if you will. <laughs> We've got to be correct here. Person-to-person. Person. We'll say person-to-person. Person. Well, that's, I don't think these ladies would be too offended if we're able to talk about the fact of one-on-one -on -one coverage, <laughs> a little bit more defensive-minded. But you're right, the Belax have got to be able to find a way, and especially you're seeing these goals from the alumni coming from far out. They're not actually coming from that close in range. But they are getting to the middle of the ice, and the Belax so far are not getting to the middle of the ice very well. Now they're trying to work a strategy here where if they've got the puck along the 
boards. Uh, they're trying to get a uh, player out in front, and that's being thwarted as well. And that's where we get back to the tighter defensive style game. So it's the Belax down three love, having to do a little bit of a rework here. As Peter Shaku will put it up on that far left side. There's a shot taken and it goes into the snowbank by Allison Edgar, number 29. And, and they threw another puck on the ice right away, leaving one of the uh, Belax stuck way back behind the alumni net. And she was unaware, but they didn't actually hurt them in this situation. Take a look at this with Edgar. You've got two players on her, either one down deep, and a good job by Edgar to get around one of them. Edgar cops up the puck and will go back into the zone and turned over there by the alumni. Pitushaka will just put it down deep and into the boards and a turnover there and out come the alumni the other way. Wow, that's they're a terrific shot those. there. Long shots and they're hitting them. Huge opportunities. Way too much as Pierre Maguire would say. <laughs> too much open space and, and too much time to be able to move it into the center of the ice. So we're saying we're looking for our monster already. Is that, yeah. is that next? I, I think that's a little bit more copyrighted. <laughs> we, 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 we get the idea. We'll salute him. It's an homage to him. But uh, <laughs> that is certainly the situation. The alumni are getting a way too much opportunity for wide open space to be able to get that puck in. You can't complain about their accuracy either, John. They are doing a nice job of hitting that small target very, very well. I mean, I can't recall the Belax at this point actually getting a decent shot on goal at this point. No, they haven't. Maybe one. I think one went off the post of this. That's true. Very well. And that's it. And that's exactly it. Now, the alumni who have been here before in terms of championships, so have the Belax. They won it, did the alumni in 06 07. As there's a shot. Defensive action there by number 14 of the alumni, Jaramasu. She's already scored this oh, afternoon. It's a giveaway. There is a cross-ice pass and a giveaway, and back the other way come the Belax. But they're trying to trying to rush that pass, it looks like, as well. When they get themselves into some open ice area, there is an alumni player. There's a giveaway right and another good first really good chance in a while for the Belax as one of their number threes. Alumni will pick it up there as Kelly Ray Ryan will put it far side. Andrea Lynch, one on two, back to Ryan. On this near side to Nirenberg, and that goes out of play. A little bit of a better forecheck, John, I was going to say, by the Belax the last couple of minutes here. So they've uh, actually been able to generate at least some opportunities because the puck was coming out all too easily for the alumni in the first five minutes or so of this game. Now well, here's the turning point that the Belax are looking for. A lot more pressure down low. Get it into the zone number one and see what you can do with scoring opportunities. But you see this alumni team quick as here's an opportunity right in the slot and, and they finally score. finally a goal, yes. Finally the Belax are able to put one by there. And they get their first goal of the afternoon. Now we have to apologize. Some of the numbers here have uh, kind of changed. Another quick goal though for the alumni. They bounce right back. That but, was uh, Nirenberg over to number 22, Kathleen O'Reilly, who already has a couple of goals on the day. And see, that stretch pass is not working, and it's picked off nicely this time. Nirenberg coming down the center of the ice. That's thwarted and hits some of the bumpy areas of this championship ice at the championship break here at Deerhurst and Huntsville on a, what else could you ask for, picturesque afternoon the snow is falling gently and the shush of blades Nirenberg there she's a great four checker we're seeing early going in this contest well they had a two-on-one opportunity there and they foiled themselves with that play but you see the speed of the alumni particularly the way yeah. that they are able to just turn on a dime and almost look to find Greg where each other seem to be well, there's obviously very good chemistry here, and we should mention that the pedigree of some of these players is, is, is rather good. I mean, they're not just literally quote-unquote pond hockey players. A lot of them have some great quality experience that they bring to these games in, involving university-level hockey players. We mentioned that the alumni had won in 06 and 07, and they lost in last year's final, so certainly redemption and revenge on the minds of the finalists from last year and the two-time former champions and the alumni. They have pretty much carried the freight here the, the entire first period. And here they come once again, O'Reilly. Big good stay defensive down there play. A good turnover and a defensive play there and back the other way. Come the Wade Belax. 
Wonderful rush here. Edgar and a goal. with a shot on goal, and she's right in the paint and is able to put that forward. That was a pretty, pretty play. She walked Look around Look at the a transition players. here, though, and you're talking about these shots. There's no pressure at all coming, and that's Kathleen O'Reilly picking up the hat trick on the afternoon so far. Both goals scored by the Belaks have been responded by the other team, uh, the alumni, very, very, almost within 20 seconds, they put the puck in the net. So the well, momentum the Belaks have tried to generate has been quickly thwarted by the alumni because their puck movement has been great. Turnover by the alumni to the Belaks, and but you see the four check here and the pressure there. That is uh, number 16, Andrea Lynch, doing a good job of just turning right around and being right in the face of the opposing player. And they shoot the puck out, which means possession for the alumni right away. Over okay. here is Jody Foster, number four for no, the alumni. She no relation. Out, no relation. <laughs> Jody spelt with a Y as opposed to an I. And there is Pearl Nirenberg. She has been a spark plug in this first half of this women's championship final. And the alumni seemingly having their way here. Turning in tight corners there is Vanessa Jiramasu. Turnover. There's a shot. Good block out in front. You can get in front out of the goal to do some goaltending, quote unquote, but you can't stand there as you were, say, a uh, Martin Brodeur or Patrick Waugh in goal and try to be able to uh, thwart a goal scoring opportunity. There are rules here for National Pond Hockey purposes as there's Bellimer right there with a the one-timer. Best front. play of the game so far for the uh, Belax there as that setup came and almost a response by the alumni but this time they actually didn't score a goal right after the Belax scored so maybe the Belax can actually climb back into this. Well the Belax are trying to get going again that's Peter Shaka turnover. That's Pearl Nirenberg and she takes the shot a little bit rushed there and fires it wide of the right post. Now, there's a little bit of confusion here. The puck will go out and somebody will throw another puck on the ice and sometimes the player's trying to fetch the puck and the puck's already back in play and the action's already starting up again. Yeah. And it's supposed to be, if a puck goes out of play, it's brought by the official that's at center ice on the other side that fires it onto the ice surface. They're supposed to leave the pucks uh, be and they will probably have to try to correct that issue as the afternoon continues. There, as we see one skitter by our broadcast location, and they put it onto the ice surface, turnover because it went out in favor of the Belax. The Belax trying to get some pressure here. Put down low, that was Sarah Skinner, number three, putting it into the corner. And there's no boards there to be able to save Pearl Nirenberg. She is in there pretty tight. Turns that around, looking for an opportunity. And turning the other way come the alumni. Good defensive play there, but Nirenberg seems to be all over the ice this afternoon. Starts a rush, she's thwarted, coming back the other way, the Belax, two on two, trying to make the move there, but a good turn aside is Andrea Lynch, and she will move that back for Nirenberg the other way. She takes the shot and a good defensive play by the Belax, and the Belax now, after a bit of a rough start, starting to find their legs they're settling. more of they're a defensive, settling. Yeah, they're defensive settling. zone as well. Absolutely, they're settling, John. So the Belax will take control of it in their own zone. And as they try that headman pass, it's always a stick or a skate or some kind of a shin of the alumni getting in the way to be able to thwart that stretch pass, if you will. Puck position. Back to the Belax. Back outside. Nuremberg falls, and that creates a two-on-two -two opportunity. Bellimer tries to take the shot, but it's turned around in a good defensive play by good the alumni. Absolutely. Just do what you can. You got the lead. Get the puck out of the rink. It will cost a turnover, though, in favor of the Belax. Hold on to it. There's an opportunity. Oh, just gets wide just... of the post. And we've seen the Belax now as they get a little bit more comfortable, Greg, trying that one-timer from the corner and a tip right in front. And here's the favorite of the alumni trying the stretch of the home run pass. And on that occasion, looking for number 22, Kathleen O'Reilly, didn't hit her. Good forecheck again. They're sending three girls, ladies in there to forecheck. Coming but the they, other way, the Belax, one on one. And, and a miss. Rush shot there. Yep. Skitters right wide of the post. 
And sometimes it still looks like the Belaks are having problems in terms of when they get to the other half of the ice, they're rushing their shots on goal. They're behind and maybe perhaps they're pressing a little.